G'day everyone, it's Drew from Drew's Adventures. Today I'm in the Dandenong Ranges here in Victoria. I'm over here for a wedding. My friends Todd and Beck got married uh, just yesterday and not far from where they got married is the beautiful Dandenong Ranges National Park. So at the moment, just going for a wander down this car park here. And there are some waterfalls that we are going to go check out. And it's a free park to enter. You don't need to pay for a pass or anything like that. Very beautiful area. Very cold today. So I'll have a look here. Dandenong Ranges National Park. Here we go. So, Sherbrook Forest has been recognised for its scenic environmental and recreational values for over 100 years. The picnic ground shows these values can be managed sustainably, and it's also another chapter in 100 years of recreational use of the forest. We've got some early pictures there. Wildlife haven, um, what animals we might see. Uh, if you come here at the right time, probably, it would be long-nosed bandicoots, eastern pygmy possums, yellow-bellied gliders, broad-toothed rats, swamp skinks, superb lyrebirds, sooty owls, and Australia's largest owl, the powerful owl. There you go. So it gives a map here of where we are. So we are here and going to try and show you guys the Sherbrooke uh, waterfalls. So here it is. This is the Sherbrooke Falls walk here. So main track from O'Donoghue Picnic Ground is one of the easier walks. And we're going to be walking through tall mountain ash and tree ferns. And yeah, the most inspiring after the rain when the swollen Sherbrooke Creek cascades over rocky outcrops. So we're going to do that walk today here in the Dandenong Ranges National Park. So let's get started. Just wandering down here, we're on the O'Donoghue track. So it just gives you a bit of a guide there of what to expect. No cats, dogs, no bicycles, do not feed wildlife, no horses, limbs may fall. And unfortunately they do have poisons out here as well to stop invasive animals from dominating this park. Look at this, isn't that beautiful? It's like just a very European style looking forest but all of it's native. Australia is really, really lucky with the types of plants and animals that we have. Um, as I've said in other videos, not every animal and plant wants to kill you here. So if you're watching from the USA, don't worry. Some of these areas are really quite uh, safe and most of our animals and plants are not going to hurt you. So I thought I'd stop here. Look at this. I'm going to zoom up to the sky. Look at this. Isn't that a tree? And then some. Look at that. <laughs> that has to be at least 200 metres tall, maybe. I don't know. Look at the base of it. Just magically huge as a mountain ash this particular tree here that we're looking at all the way up to the sky beautiful so this particular forest is what you would call a wet temperate forest so it's not tropical far from tropical it's actually really really cold today guys probably about 10 or 11 degrees and uh, nearly midday here in Victoria when I'm filming this. Look at that, there's a base of one of the trees. Isn't that just magical? Wow, and how tall these are, these mountain ash. They are just a massive tree, quite spectacular. A lot of bracken fern, like we get back in South Australia. But yeah, this is really cool. So. 
Keep wandering down the trail. As it says earlier, gum trees tend to have a, well, eucalyptus, as they're also called, tend to have a tendency to drop limbs. So if you do hear a crack sound and I start running, and this video interrupts, you'll know why. <laughs> Just because of uh, the need to run out of the way of a falling tree branch. Check out these stumps, wow. And the colours on them, I mean the colours are just spectacular, they're like rainbows in and of themselves really. Here we go. Very, very soggy underfoot. I'm just making sure I don't go for a slip. <laughs> Have a look at how muddy it is. <laughs> Not wearing my hiking boots because it's only supposed to be a short walk. <laughs> so we'll see how successful I go in not tripping over. It started to rain. Here's an example of the gorgeous tree ferns that call this region home. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Just really quite magnificent. Looks like we've got another person walking here as well today. Let's go have a look at the sign coming up. Oh, we've got Link Track, Sherbrooke Track, 40 metres. Is it 40 metres? Yep. Howdy. Here we go, let's have a look. Oh, there we go, guys. So Sherbrooke Falls, 600 metres down here, I believe. So it is very muddy. That's one thing I would warn you about. If you're going to come and check out Sherbrooke Falls, definitely uh, probably wear better shoes than what I'm wearing, but I'm just making this quick dash down here, really, to show you guys what, uh, what it looks like. Yeah, very, 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 very moist. It's <laughs> a terrible word, isn't it? Moist. Wow. Oh gosh, this is very sloshy. <laughs> but absolutely magnificent. It feels like you're in the scene of a Jurassic Park movie. All right, let's have a look as we come down here. So going down to the waterfalls, absolutely pouring now everyone, I hope that my gimbal copes, I'm trying to keep it sheltered a bit as we wander down, there's another one of these mountain ash stumps, big trees. Okay, so, wandering, wandering, wandering. Let's check out the scenery, guys. Isn't that beautiful? Just canopies and rainforest ground cover. Lots of um, ferns and all sorts. Check out the moss, there we go. Bit of moss on this big one, look at that. Covers the entire width of the video. This massive stump here, there's my my little foot compared to that stump. <laughs> Huge. Yeah, here we go. Keep on wandering, wandering, wandering. Might try and be a bit quieter so you guys can hear the birds as we wander down this section. Look at this massive tree in front of me. Have a look at that. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that just phenomenal or what? Check out the, what are these? Like sort of 
or notches on the tree. I don't know what they would be called. Bunions? <laughs> Do trees get bunions? I'm not sure. Oh, and have a look at the little tiny little mushrooms there. Look, fungi, like bracket fungi. Isn't that awesome? Wow. Spectacular is that. Just incredible. The rainforest, whether it be temperate or tropical, is alive in every sense of the word. There's no part here that has no purpose to play. And I think, to me, a rainforest symbolises life, you know. Everyone has a part to play in whatever you're doing, whether you're at work, if you're at home, if you're, you know, contributing to your community, your country somehow. And I just think, yeah, the rainforest is kind of the parallel of what life is all about. We all have our little part to play in it, in life. Mm, here we go. I'm walking very slow, guys, because of this very muddy track. <laughs> My shoes actually aren't too bad. Famous wife's last words. <laughs> no, not too bad at all. I probably should have worn the, uh, the gum boots down here. It is cold, but it's not uncomfortably cold. Mm. Very much like sections of Mount Lofty back home. Just trying to step very carefully so that I don't go tipping over. <laughs> <coughs> So, I think we're not too far away now from the waterfalls. Oh, check it out, some more really cool bracket fungi living on this little log here that's fallen. Ain't they pretty? Wow, that's so cool. All right, let's keep wandering. You can hear cockatoos in the background. They are pretty commonly kept as pets, actually, across Australia and parts of the world. Okay, so I'm not sure where... I don't think I go down there for the waterfalls, but I'm not too sure. <laughs> let's see, let's go down this way. Very, very muddy track. So once again everyone, you're watching Drew's Adventures and I'm in the Dandenong Ranges National Park in Victoria. And we're having a look today at the Sherbrooke Falls. Sherbrooke, I don't know how you say it now. But, uh, looks really, really nice. And it's a wet, temperate forest. Not tropical here at all. Oh, look at that. Wow. Does that not look Tarzan-like or what? <laughs> wow. Check this out, everyone. This massive. I mean, there's my, there's my leg there. And it's huge. This massive log just going over the little river there. 
and you can see plenty of the tree ferns and these tree ferns get very tall in this region. I've seen some here that you could probably quite easily drive a truck under because they're that tall. They've got a lot of clearance. Let's go down this little section. I think we're pretty close to the waterfalls now. I said it was about 600 metres, so give or take. Shouldn't be too far away. Oh, here's another massive log across the riverbed. Down there, check out these tree ferns, aren't they just... Glorious. If I had better shoes on, I probably would try and walk across the uh, riverbed on one of these big logs. Ooh, you can hear that big flock of cockatoos. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> That's awesome. And they nest in the logs of, or well, the hollows, sorry, of these trees that we're seeing, these big mountain ash trees. That's why it's really important that old trees are left in the wild because they still have nesting uses for cockatoos and plenty of other bird species. I'd imagine that would be the case right around the world, not just in Australia, but right around the world. You have your forest like this, where every single part of the forest has its purpose, has its part to play. Oh, I think I hear the waterfall, I think. There we go. No, maybe not yet. Not too sure. Oh, look at this little bridge. Oh, isn't this just something out of a, another world? It's obviously not safe to uh, wander onto, but... Have a look at the amount of moss and natural degradation that's occurred here as a trees crashed onto it, knocked it half over. And uh, yeah, wow, check this out. Mm. <laughs> I won't wander up there because I don't want to go uh, falling into the water, but yeah. That's quite something. Just shows you the power of nature, right? Nature's always going to take over whatever man-made structures we think we're so good at making. Nope, nature says, I got other plans. <laughs> okay, so let's keep wandering. Pretty sure soon we should coming up to the waterfall part. This section here is a bit easier to walk actually, it's not as muddy as further up the track there. Check this out. Look at how big that root section is on that massive tree that's gone across the river there. There you go, there's one of your taller tree ferns just here. As I say, these get quite a height. They're not small, um, 
and they're obviously in the right area because back in Adelaide I think you would struggle to get these to grow we just don't have the right conditions for them yeah. I'm gonna head down and see where the waterfall is Ah, here we go, 400 metres to the Sherbrooke Falls. Let's go up here. Check it out, guys. These are huge. Look at that. Wow. It's just such an incredibly huge tree the mountain ash is it's a species of gum tree eucalyptus for those overseas and grows only in areas where it's temperate and just the right conditions needed for them to get to this kind of magnificent height i'm not sure what's happened here but it looks like they've had to clear some of the trees back, I don't know why that would be the case. I know that there was a really bad storm here over this part of Melbourne, I think maybe 12 months ago, perhaps. So maybe that's got to do with it. But yeah, looks like there's a lot of trees that have snapped off quite literally. That's why when they warn you about the risk of trees falling you've got to take that seriously because it doesn't take much for the native trees here to come crashing down so while we wander down here let's have a listen to that river isn't that just beautiful hmm. So we've got a group coming up. Hey. Howdy. Hi. Hello. Howdy. <laughs> Howdy. Oh, you have to grab it. It's a very popular spot by the looks. I think we can't be too far away now from these waterfalls. Sherbrooke Falls, oh, here we go. Oh, um, that's got me curious as to which is which here. You've got two signages, both saying Sherbrooke Falls, Sherbrooke Falls. So perhaps we'll try down here. Oh, look at that. Wow, isn't that so much like Jurassic Park? Oh, I see. Okay, so this side is one side of the viewing of Sherbrooke Falls, where I'm walking up to now. And then there's another side where you can also look at it, so that makes sense. So either way, you are going to see Sherbrooke Falls. Sherbrooke Falls, I should say. I'm not saying it well, am I? <laughs> very, very cold. Excuse me if I sound a bit sniffly or nose blocked. Um, okay, I think I've walked about 200 metres. Oh gosh, check this out. Hoo -hoo. It's so muddy. Oh, super muddy. Super duper muddy. Okay, let's wander down here. I can hear something that sounds like waterfalls on this left side. This is where I think I've come to the right spot, I'm hoping. Of course it has been raining, so waterfalls. Perfect when it's raining. Okay, there's some quick little glimpse down there. 
Look at that. Isn't that just beautiful? Very wonderful natural region. Oh wow, check that out everyone. Ooh, wow. I think there was a path down here. Perhaps there still is that you can walk down and see it closer. So let's go and do that. The smells in here, all I can describe is just gloriously natural. Yeah, here we go, let's walk down here. Once again, if you're gonna come here, you probably do wanna have sturdier shoes than what I'm wearing. Don't wear your Vans or your Converse, <laughs> unless they're actually designed for hiking. But yeah, look at this. What a magical spot. Wow, here we go. Look at this, everyone. Woo! Wow. So this is Sherbrooke Falls. Check it out. Whoa. It's pretty. So, so pretty. That water's just cascading over that rock. Won't like know tomorrow. Down into the gully. What a glorious sight that is. Here's the other side here. Magnificent, isn't it? Absolutely spectacular.